What is up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, and Matthew Sponauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today. Going to go over some of the NFL news that's been going on, do some possible free agent landing spots, probably talk about the Deshaun Watson you know, situation and where he might land, and then wrap up with some NBA topics as well. Before we get started, Matt and Theo, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing all right. I've been watching the Deshaun Watson stuff, <laughs> considering that the Panthers are, I mean, I guess the front runner to land him at this point. He's got the best, they've got the best Vegas odds for him. So um, I don't think it would be a good move, but definitely be uh, interesting. I'm still in Seattle here. Uh, it's my last day and I'm at a different hotel now. And yeah, good city. I'm wrapping it up and I'll be back in Phoenix in my normal apartment with all the stuff behind me next time sure. so yeah I'm you know, having a good was, time. <laughs> my team's not about to trade I, I don't think i don't think mine is but probably I know not. some browns fans have been pushing that narrative a little bit on the last episode someone commented and asked if you guys are my two favorite co-hosts who are my two least favorite co-hosts of all time um i don't i don't know are you also my are you also my two least favorite co hosts? So would that is that how that would work? I mean, I guess well, so. You don't have any other co hosts. I, I guess so. That is either true. one of us could be your least favorite. So. But before we get into everything, just a reminder everyone to uh subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's no one's birthday. No holidays are going on that I know of. But uh yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, NFL free agency. That's kind of a holiday. That's a good reason to subscribe to the YouTube channel. But uh, I said we just hop off with uh, Amari Cooper to the Browns. I, I want to know how you feel I'm, about I'm it. Happy. I think you should lead this. I'm happy. I don't Browns know why fan. I wouldn't be happy. Fan. We gave up essentially just a fifth round pick because we traded a six. They gave us a six back. Like Amari Cooper for a fifth is big money. And I, I know... Uh, and twenty and twenty million dollars. Well, yeah. yeah it, see, that's that's what I was about to say. It's misleading yeah. to say that do, you just got. Do him we for have to pay him twenty million? Pick. Sure, but it's like we're probably going to end up getting rid of Jarvis Landry. I would like to see us get rid of Austin Hooper. That'll free up some cap space as well. And I know everyone's like, "Oh, it's going to be just like just like Odell Baker's just going to Baker's just going to not be able to throw the ball to him." But I, I, I think to an extent, like a. I would like to see future Cleveland Browns legend Derek Carr. B, in the event that I don't get to see Derek Carr and we reunite ACDC, I, I'm going to roll with the fact that the Browns have said that Baker will probably be their starter. And I know teams have said that before. And then, you know, given the opportunity to upgrade, they always take it. Um, but if, if they're going to roll with Baker and Baker's healthy next year, I'm going to trust in the Browns. As, as I always have, I'm going to trust in the Browns to you know make the right decision here and I'm I'm going to trust that Baker Mayfield is going to be better than he was at least last year cuz last year is probably the worst that he's been. I I think that's reasonable. I think the Baker hate is maybe just a, a smidge. Like he's played good games before. He's played good stretches of football before. Um but it it definitely does feel like does Amari Cooper fix the passing game for them? Probably not. And obviously, you know, you can't just not give Baker any receivers. You don't just want, want to have no receivers. But $20 million is a lot. I mean, it makes him like probably a top five paid wide receiver in the league, I would guess. Six. And six. Six. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. He's tied for five with Mike Williams, and then he's $25,000 behind four at Keenan Allen. And he's, he's right up there. Um, but I, I think. Cooper's probably he's not the he's not a top five receiver and I understand you know it's not dollar for dollar but I don't think this is some like you know of course when you see fifth round pick for Amari Cooper who's very good it's like oh my god what a steal but I would say that this is maybe just what they felt was the best option at receiver I guess uh, that they had available because they had to go get a guy right they had to go they had to revamp you can't go into the season with Landry as your wide receiver one again you just can't but I mean it is yeah. it is paying a guy $20 million for, and what is Amari Cooper's production been? He's never had a 1200 yard season. It's always like, you know, 1000 yeah, yeah. or 1,100, which isn't bad at all, but you, I mean, but uh, he's been sharing a lot of targets with, not, you know, now lamb and 
Yeah, but still, uh, so you're not probably going to get a career high season from him with Baker Mayfield. You're not. It didn't work with Odell. I don't see why it would be different with with Cooper. Cooper's a precise timing route runner, and Baker just struggles mm-hmm. to play like that. So I don't know why it would work like all that much better. So if you're going to probably get something more on the low end of Cooper's production, and he's the sixth highest paid wide receiver in football with a $20 million cap hit, it's like, I, I think like, obviously they had to do something and, and for a fifth, it's not the worst mm-hmm. move in the world, but I just don't, yeah. I just don't think it really changes the, the Browns all that much in my eyes while Baker's still the quarterback. Cause it's like, okay, it is, it is a little bit of an overpay in the, in the, for, for what they're probably going to get for him with the cap. That's probably where I'm at. It's probably a little bit of an overpay because I think he's going to. But I mean, you were probably going to overpay regardless of who you got, right? I mean, well, it's not like, okay, let's say they got like Christian Kirk. He's b- being projected to get 15 million. W- and I think I'd rather have Cooper on 20. I would, million than I would Christian say Kirk this. If you were Christian Kirk, would you sign with the Browns? <laughs> I, I mean, wouldn't. I, I don't wouldn't. Know. I would sign. <laughs> I think a, a part, maybe part of this is that we have to go get a receiver and signing a high end guy might be tough when you don't have a high end quarterback. Yeah, especially after yeah. the way things ended. It's not it's with Baker it ended so it's, it's not just so that he's not that great. Like there yeah. were videos like 11 minutes long of Odell being open and Baker not hitting him. <laughs> and Odell was one of the best wide receivers like ever <laughs> like in his prime on New York. So like the idea of going to Cleveland it might be even scarier than like most bad quarterback situations and free agency. Well, because because if you don't put up the numbers, even if it's Baker's fault, there's a lot of people who are gonna. It's gonna be your fault no matter what. Yeah. Um, because it just can't be Baker's fault. But um, the Browns fans who are like, well, it's completely <laughs> Odell and Amari Cooper are on completely different sides of the route running spectrum. Like, what are you talking about? No. Oh, Odell's not. free. <laughs> they're not at all. Like Odell freelanced. <laughs> he just ran whatever he wanted. Oh, he didn't try. Like he didn't tear his ACL in Cleveland tracking down an interception that Baker threw like across the whole field. <laughs> Just like just some of the narratives that Browns fans have on Odell is just hilarious. But it's the Browns had to had to get a receiver. They did. They did. It's not a in the draft or like I I I was saying that I thought they should trade for Lockett. I thought Lockett would have been a good guy to trade for. It's hard to tell um, if he's that, available. But yeah. yeah, that's that's also true. And the the thing with Cooper is that there there was some um, kind of discontinuity with him in in Dallas. So that's another wet reason. Like it was a little bit easier to get that trade done. Um, but that's that was my is like you either have to draft a guy or trade for one or both. Um, and now that we do have Cooper, I wouldn't be surprised to see us go. And I would like us to go like interior defensive line with the thirteenth pick, or maybe even you know edge or linebacker. Um, you want Jordan? Right Davis? now, it's it's just it's just Miles Garrett and. Uh, Jeremiah Wusu. Yeah, I just I just mocked it. them. George Karloftis to be on the other side because Kalani's a free agency. Overall, I've been a little <laughs> yeah. bit negative on this because I think like for his cap hit, he's not going to probably produce like the sixth best wide receiver in football. But that being said, I do I do understand the move for the Browns. It's not like it seems like such a slam, slam dunk when you just look at it. It's like oh my god, Mari Cooper. It's definitely a top twenty wide receiver for f- like a fifth round pick. It seems like such a slam dunk. If you peel back the layers a little bit, it's probably not as much of a slam dunk. But it, it's, it's not. It's, it's not that it's a slam dunk. It's. I think it it frees up what we can do in the draft. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I think that's probably that's, that's. I think that's the most important. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. That it, it, I would. We don't have to take. Which a is what I was saying about Mike Williams, by the way. And you were like, I don't get it. Bad move. It frees up what you can do in the draft <laughs> so you don't have another hole to fill. I guess. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see that. Now that's through the Browns lens. Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Cooper. Cooper. Um, yeah. Yeah. For the Cowboys, I think. I'll it's say this about the Cowboys. Yeah. You'll see some takes. I saw some takes. Oh, why wouldn't they get rid of Zeke? Not an option. Not possible. Oh, why? So they're getting rid of Amari Cooper to pay Ezekiel Elliott. No. They can get rid of Amari Cooper, and they have to free yeah. up money. No one is trading for Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke has like thirty million dollars guaranteed. I wouldn't pay. You, it cost you money to cut him, and are you going to take on Zeke's contract? Who's going to do that? No one. I've said this before. I said this last year. I would pay a pretty decent draft pick for someone to take Zeke's contract. Like I, I think would, it would cost a first. I think it might cost. I said it would cost a second. <laughs> I said it would cost a second round pick like two years ago to trade Zeke, like Zeke and a first and a second round pick for like a day three pick just to like get that off. Maybe, your maybe not a first, but I think it would cost because uh, 
the the trade I go back to with it's this is Osweiler. Um, Osweiler. Osweiler, right? Osweiler yeah. was eighteen million guaranteed, fully one season. With Zeke, even after this year, he still has eleven million guaranteed on the cap. So you could cut him now. I mean, you could basically charge some team for thirty million dollars in cap space if you really wanted to. But um, yeah, I don't think any team's taking that hit for just a second. It probably have to be like a second plus. Something, but a first would be too much, I would say. Yeah, I'd um, rather just deal with Zeke and give up a first. And it'll be really interesting to see what the Cowboys do here. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think the Cowboys, I mean, they've already re signed um, their tight end, who's <laughs> I'm Schultz, so bad right? with names, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz, they oh, already re signed him, which it looks like might not happen. They'll probably use this to sign Gallup. And I mean, mm-hmm. CD and Gallup and Schultz and like and Dak. It's probably still you know, going to Cedric, Wil- Cedric Wilson was balling out. Last I mean, Amari year, Cooper's but. not even didn't even have like this great season last year, and they were still first in the league in points per game for an offense. So I think yeah. Dallas is honestly going to be okay without Amari Cooper, and it'll be interesting to see if they can add maybe a, a, a linebacker or, or something with the money they saved from Cooper, or if it's just all going to go to Gallup, which would be a very interesting choice. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this for Dallas. I don't, I sort of see the vision, but I don't totally see the vision. Cause I don't know. It's, I, I get it because it's like, it, it's tough with moves like this to judge them in a vacuum because really the mistake was already made. The Zeke contract was the mistake. This move isn't necessarily in that sense, but like, this is now the result of the mistake and people will be like, Oh, this was the bad move. I don't know if it is, but I still think you'd have enough weapons uh, losing Cooper does suck, but Gallup's really good um, on my fantasy team, and um, <laughs> uh, CD's still that guy. And you've got tight end like this. By no means would you look at Dallas's receiving core and be like, "Yeah, they're screwed now." Yeah. They're at, not. At least they got a fifth yeah. instead of cutting him, like it said they might. You know, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess. Hey. But uh, I mean, that's what the Browns are kind of trying to do with Jarvis at this point. And if it's they like, if they resign. If they re-sign Gallup and then they go get some like other receiver, even like a day three guy, just an interesting prospect, you'll look at that and you'll be like, yeah, this is still pretty, yeah. pretty great, yeah. honestly. You can still feel the top 10 offense without him. So I'm not saying they won the deal because they didn't really, they just lost Amari Cooper. They didn't, that's not good. <laughs> they got a fifth run for Amari Cooper. Yeah. That's not good. But it does give them a little bit more flexibility, I think. And, and I don't think they're screwed by any means. So overall, like I said on TikTok, this move is like a huge name. Amari Cooper to the Browns. It seems so big. But I really don't think it has like this crazy effect on either team. I think still think like him, him and... It just gives each team... It just gives each team more flexibility. Yeah, it just, that's basically right. It. I think him and Baker aren't going to click, and I think the Cowboys' offense is going to be all right without him. So like this big trade just happened, and then that's reflected in the price. But overall, I'm just not quite sure how how impactful it's going to be but anyway <laughs> hey i i hope it's really impactful that's that's all i can say um speaking of offenses a lot uh well there are a number of teams that have the potential for their offense to drastically change this offseason if anyone can pull the trigger on deshaun watson um and it sounds like the panthers might be the front runner this so is that- a tough this is a tough segment to record because yeah. It will probably happen between the time we talk about it and the time it comes out. Yeah. So if you're listening and we're totally wrong, forgive us. <laughs> but I think I, I, I'm feeling <laughs> if he waves his no trade clause for Carolina, I have a very hard time imagining that they don't end up getting him. They've got the number and six overall be, pick. They've got Burns. They've got, I think, more probably. They have perfect assets to do it and they are going to easily i think be the most aggressive team yeah this is matt rule's job is completely he's is on the line he knows it he has to get a quarterback this is the only this is like the only option because i don't think they're drafting a guy the only team i could see with more assets to move is uh philly but I doubt they need to be as Rappaport, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Th- Rappaport is saying the Panthers and Saints have offered the deal. It seems like yeah. it's coming down to those two teams. And one thing, I think Christian McCaffrey is going to be an attractive option for the Texans front office. I really do. I think like for most people, McCaffrey is like whatever because he's an injury-prone running back on a big contract. But the way the Texans operate and what it's they never gave bothered them. never bothered them. David Johnson didn't work out. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is like David Johnson on steroids. So... 
you, I think McCaffrey is yeah. going to be a really value, which could be. Here, I mean, the Watson situation is so difficult to talk about because a, it is. It's he exists in this gray area right now where people need to understand, like the chart, the criminal charges got dropped, but you know, people think that's such a black and white thing and it's not Deshaun Watson no. still exists in this moral gray area to root for, because although he has all the, like he just, he's not going to be a criminal. He's not going to be a criminal. Right. He, um, it's so hard to convict someone of sexual. Right, it is. That's it what is. People if don't someone, if someone plays the consent, so if someone plays the consent card, and then it's just hard to say that they for sure didn't it's do just, that. It's, it's, just it's he impossible. Said, she it's impossible. Said. It, that's it. It's, Especially yeah. when someone can go up in front of a grand jury and say, I plead the fifth. I'm just not going to describe what happened that night. It's just impossible to yeah. prove. So I, I st- like he's going to get tr- moved, but it's just a difficult thing to, to talk about in uh in especially with like an audience like a sports audience of like a lot of high school boys, which is probably you listen to our podcast. It's, it's, it's such a gray area to talk about this. So I just want to say that before anything gets out of the way is like, I, I personally think that he is not cleared of anything, even despite the, which is just a weird thing for me to say, but it it sounds wrong, but it's, it's, you're right though. Yeah. No, I I was, I was in a Twitter spaces last night and someone was like, "Do, do you want the Browns to make a move for Watson? How would you feel about that? And I'm like, I would feel like a Steelers fan. Like, <laughs> right. Big Ben I, I is a comfortable it would just situation. Be like, we, we, that's what it's like. We would like, I sat here as a Browns fan and clown Steelers fans. I was like, bro, your quarterback is a rapist. Like, let's yeah, but even, even <laughs> that it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. And it's, it's tough to paint with broad strokes in this situation. And even the big Ben situation, which is probably the most similar, uh, where I think he got suspended yeah. for six games. Um, wasn't charged criminally, but he did reach a settlement. I mean, he, that's not a win yeah. if you have to settle. So. And it wasn't, I, I'm, I thought Watson was supposed to reach a settlement. I don't know if he ended well, up. Well, they're just going through the criminal stuff, and then it'll go to civil, no? Yeah, okay. it will. So that's here's, just, yeah. It's here's the thing about the Watson stuff. Now, the Panthers are the Vegas favorite, so I'm not just talking about this through a Panthers lens because I'm a Panthers fan. They'd be terrible if they did this. They're going to be an awful team. It doesn't make it. Watson is not a miracle worker. Yeah, he went four and the, twelve the, last time we saw him. Yeah the the price for Watson starts starts at three firsts and two young players. That's where it's going to start. And he, if Watson got the most back in a trade of any player ever, you would say, yeah, that makes sense. I'd be, it'd be, you'd feel lucky to not have to get. He's easily going to be the most valuable player ever traded. I think if the Panthers go and make, maybe, maybe I'm forgetting somebody, but like, I'm talking like there's some, how much there's some trades like Ricky Williams, like when Mike Ditka in like the nineties gave up yeah, like a whole some draft like, for Ricky Williams in the olden days when people like <laughs> didn't when do it just like outside of just completely like nonsensical stuff. In the, this is, in the this last is 20 be. years in the last, like of the, in the last 20 years, yeah, I could see it yeah. for sure. If the Panthers and the Panthers are already down assets, if they make this move, they will have no cap space. I mean, like next to none and very few ways to free up more. They'll be down multiple good defensive players, even if they somehow keep Burns. Let's say they go Jeremy Chin and Derek Brown are the two, which is probably the best combo they could pull off. They don't just lose those guys on defense because they also lose Hassan Reddick. They don't have the money to re-sign them. Gilmore, gone. Jackson, gone. All of a sudden, they're weak on the defensive line because they lost their best edge rusher and their best interior defensive player. They're weak. Their linebackers would only be all right. They'd be weak at cornerback, which was supposed to be, oh, look how strong the Panthers are. Their offensive line would basically have no real way to improve, and it was one of the worst, if not the worst, units in the league last year. The receivers are only okay. Moore's really good. Anderson, maybe he plays better. And then Christian McCaffrey, who, if he's not included in the deal, you can't trust to stay healthy. And their their highest pick would be a fifth rounder this year. Yeah. They would be an awful team. It's more than a quarterback, so I, I can't... Yeah, I think so. I think like if you are the Panthers and talking about this from a pure football, like trying to field a good football team next year, you hope that you hope that McCaffrey holds a lot of weight. And if trading away McCaffrey like gets you out of trading away like a lot more, because I think McCaffrey is like a total 
not a total liability, but if you could part with McCaffrey and that's viewed as like a, a massive positive for the for the Texans, that would be a huge win for the Panthers. Like it's I think I think he has to be included because they just ha- they have to have some cap space. They can't just run back the entire offensive <laughs> line. Yeah, that cannot possibly be what they do. Right. So so it, it's got to free up the money. That would that'd be what I would guess. So instead of maybe being like, oh, we want three first round picks and and two really good young players, if if McCaffrey can turn that into like McCaffrey and and like three for like if that can like eliminate that's like two guys by himself, and I think there's a chance the. the Texans view him like that. I think that is something that could, right. that would be like the biggest hope. And if they traded Chin, I don't think Chin is like that great. I think Chin is a little overrated. So if it was like McCaffrey it's, it's, and I don't, Chin, it, it wouldn't be about Chin being that good. It's just like, but even then, there's no. But even just then, they're bad at that position. Yeah, it's like they're just going <laughs> to. Yeah, I, I also don't think that Derek Brown is some stud or anything. Um, he's been decent. He's been pretty good, but probably not worth where he picked them. But even that being said. We would, and in the Panthers' defense in general, very overrated last year. Extremely overrated. Was not even that strong. I think there's a chance that J.C. Horns included. I, if you were the Texans, and you are not the Texans, but if you were the Texans, you would you would want to trade him to the Panthers because they're most desperate. You'd want a bunch of picks, and then you'd be going for Burns. I'd be going for Horn. Burns or Horn, or I'd be going for Moore. I'd be going for that, and that's the yeah. if yeah. they trade DJ Moore. There's truly no strategy to what they're doing. They're just going to go put Deshaun Watson on the worst possible offense <laughs> with no way to improve it. I mean, he's he's the only. It'd be like, yeah, we'll get Watson. We'll trade you guys Taylor Moten and DJ Moore, and then we'll just have the worst supporting cast that any quarterback has ever had. Like, I don't know. I just it'll ju- it'll just be like Cam Newton all over again. It, and and the thing the thing about this this is too. Winning, we talk so much about how like when you pay a quarterback, even a great one, it makes it very hard to win a championship. So I think there's a real argument that if you're building a Super Bowl contender, doing it through trading for an elite quarterback by giving up the world and then also having to pay him money is an incredibly tough route to go. Yeah, and it I mean, did kind of work with the Rams. I know that's going to be the comparison, but Stafford wasn't getting paid. The that Rams much were and, already a Super Bowl caliber. The Rams team. were the second round playoff team. They were in the second round of the playoffs. They lost to the Packers. They were two games away from the Super yeah. Bowl, and when they traded for Stafford, so and they had a Hall of Fame level head coach, and it took the additions of Von Miller and Odell Beckham in season to bring. They all win the Super Bowl without those two yeah. guys. So even though they were mm-hmm. a second round playoff team. They got a relatively bargain Stafford. Although Watson's not on the worst contract in the world for his. No. Cal- it's not the worst, no. but it's what, a lot. 35? 35 for Watson 35, or something like that is not bad it's for Watson at least. But it is a lot. No, no, yeah. it's it's not. But it still is a lot. It still is a lot. It's, it's still a, a, a lot more than a rookie contract, right. basically. There's a threshold. Like if you're a, a quarterback making this percent of the cap, you just it's very hard to win a Super Bowl and it hasn't really happened. Watson is above that threshold, although it's not as far above as some are. But yeah, I agree, Matt. Uh, the Panthers, Watson with the Panthers, does not to me seem like a Super Bowl contender, and it, it would probably be really hard to rebuild, especially when Rule is around. Especially if they like trading for Watson makes him good this- enough to not fire Rule. I just don't see him winning a Super Bowl like ever. <laughs> like if, well, if this, they go, this like, is this is the if they have like a nine yeah. or ten win season. Do they fire rule if it's like okay and they're wide, like oh, make the playoffs, but they're not like a Super Bowl contender? I don't know. I don't know. We talk a lot about how like okay, I'm, I'm talking oh the Panthers they wouldn't be able to make the right moves, but even if they had the assets, I have no faith in the front office to go and make the right calls. They've done a terrible job <laughs> signing free agents. Oh, if they had some money for offensive linemen, they did last year. What good did that do us? None. Yeah. So, I I just. So let's talk about the Saints then. Let's talk about the, let's move it to the Saints because yeah, the let's other talk team. about a different okay. team. Another team in the NFC South, which is looking very open right now. The best quarterback in the NFC South at this current moment is Matt Ryan, with who has no wide receivers at this current moment and a horrible offensive line. That's like <laughs> the best quarterback situation in the entire. So it makes sense that two NFC South teams are just seeing like a free playoff bid up in the air right now. So it makes sense that it's two NFC North te- NFC South teams. I also think the Saints. The Saints have operated in very questionable moral areas before. I remember yeah. I remember when 
uh, their owner's like PR team helped cover up like sexual abuse by the Catholic church or something. I remember that happening at Bounty Gate. So like the saints, the saints have done some like very questionable moral things before, which like, you know, trading for Watson would be bounty. So it it makes a little bit of sense to me. Um, What would the saints give up? I am not sure either. If it's like maybe Lattimore, maybe, maybe someone like, you know, Chauncey Gardner Johnson or, or, um, oh, the defensive lineman, Davenport. I would I would Davenport. ask for probably Davenport, um, which wouldn't be a horrible move because they did take Peyton Turner last year in the first round who was hurt this year. So Davenport's probably involved in that deal. Um, again, I, I just feel like the Texans love, love running back. So maybe Kamara, although he's got his own legal situations and three first round picks in two seconds. Um, if you could do it for yeah. probably just spitballing here like Davenport and maybe I don't know like if they would want that middle line do you think do you think they would give up Michael Thomas no because it wouldn't make any it wouldn't sense make any to. sense to it, it wouldn't make any sense but like you have to give up something you have to give us, Davenport's not I, I also I don't think the Texans like I guess I mean yeah, Michael Davenport. Thomas is a great player but like I don't know is that really the are they really like taking a risk on maybe a little bit of an older, not that old, but like a little bit of an older receiver with injury problems, even though he's great. Like, I feel like if they're looking for like good, like young players, I feel like they want, you know, good young yeah. players. Right. I, so, and, and the saints and, and then once the saints, like, what do they do? Right. Like, yeah. got, like who's their wife, number one wide receiver? If, if, if Michael Thomas is gone, I, I mean, again, it's, it's, a very, I think this is a very similar situation to the Panthers. The Saints have to be kind of desperate here. Yeah, I mean, the Saints... I... The Saints also... I disagree. Yes. They're not They're not desperate to the extent of, like, the Panthers, where it's like their coach's job is on the line here. But in terms of, like, they have to free up cap space, so they have to move guys to free up cap space. And um, their quarterback is Taysom Hill. Yeah. Well, they have other options. Like, for, for, they don't need to move guys to free up cap space. Although, I think that's part of the maybe the secret good part of this trade for the Saints, if they make it, is that if they trade guys who cost a lot of money, then they they have some money, right? But they could also free up. They can. They're going to just restructure a bunch of contracts, and people will see like, oh, nothing mattered, and it matters. They still are. They still don't have a lot of cap space. They still will lose guys that they would resign if they had the money for it. Don't get it twisted. Um. But if this doesn't work, I do think they get Jameis back. Yeah. I do think they spend the money and get Jameis back. So it and also their coach is in their first year and he's been with the organization forever. So it's it's I think it's a totally different thing. Right. But even even I really think three first is like underselling how much it's gonna cost. Yeah. I think I, I think, think some teams it could be like, three first, some seconds, and then Cameron Jordan, maybe, and and maybe Dav- Marcus Davenport, like I said, and that for the t- for the Texans would do what Davenport and like Cameron Jordan, just hypothetical Cameron Jordan's 32. So maybe it wouldn't be him, but he's someone that's still a decent player. I think on, uh, on contract for two more years. So that would like give you a good edge rushing duo that would give you all these picks. So there's, there's that maybe they do want Peyton Turner, who was the first round pick last year, who is on under a cheap contract until 2026. You don't really know what you have in him because he was hurt so much this year. But, I mean, that's a first-round pick that's under con- cheap contract through 2026. If you want maybe him and and Marcus Davenport, I, I feel like there's something. If the Saints are involved, one of these defensive ends is involved. I pr- probably Davenport. Maybe maybe you want that first-round pick, Peyton Turner. Maybe you want an established guy like Jordan. I feel like one of those guys is in it. Um, maybe someone like Daniel Onimata. But I, I feel like the, the Saints make more sense to me for, than the Panthers because Watson and Dennis Allen's defense because they've got guys that I think Dennis Allen I mean the, you've seen the way that he owned Tom Brady in the Buccaneers at least in the regular season over these past couple years and how the Saints were like a defense so bad that Drew Brees was having a losing record like six times and then like how that defense has transformed into one of the best in the league I, I think that they and I think they will keep Michael Thomas and I think they probably will keep um, 
a real key and they're just like a better organization in general with like a, more of a historical precedent for success and they just like i guess just know how to win i guess even though sean payton is gone there's like people in that organization that is like experienced long playoff runs and long runs of like okay this is yeah. fielding what if fielding a good team looks like so if they go well all in on watson and it's watson to michael thomas and the defense is just average that's a team that i think is pretty at this point, I look around and is like pretty comfortably winning that division. Whereas the Panthers is like they suck already, and they're gonna like yeah, dude. Like everyone has this idea, they're like, but they're in a bad division. They'd have a quarterback. It's like yeah, but everything else is against <laughs> every everything other, else. Is every bad. other unit you've named the two things in their benefit, right? And that's yeah. and oh, gee, it's it's all oh, the, it's a terrible division. And then the Saints get a quarterback. The Saints resign Jameis, and it's like well. We're worse than them now. So, I'm, <laughs> right. I, I, uh, if I was Watson, I wouldn't waive my no trade clause for the Panthers. However, you know, Carolina and he went to Clemson and uh, his like Houston quarterback coach, we hired. Um, and they, the, the, the Pan, no team wants him, wants, wants Watson more than the Panthers. Yeah. So. It, it could it could very well be the Panthers here, and that could very well break by the time we talk about like by the time this, you are listening to this podcast. But I do think the Saints make more sense just from a standpoint of like I trust the defense more, I trust the coaching staff more, I trust Michael Thomas. Yes. Although I trust DJ more as well. Um, but like I think Michael Thomas is there's no guarantee they keep DJ yeah, more. <laughs> Michael Thomas is someone I, I think that they will keep. He is 29, uh, but yeah, that's yeah. an offensive player of the year right there. So. I and Kamara, yeah. I think we'll probably get hit with a suspension. And honestly, Kamara and and Deshaun Watson could both get hit with suspensions and then come back at the same time. In like week four. <laughs> and that's that's what would happen to the Panthers. They're going to trade all this stuff for them for him, and then he'll get suspended like eight games or something. So we're just going to roll out the worst imaginable team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, would, I mean, that's can, you, you can see it. We're gonna have it'll, we're gonna do all this. We're gonna trade. Three first, we're going to trade all the defensive players, and we're going with Darnold week one again. <laughs> For eight games, and you're 0-8 by the time Watson gets there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's a mess. I think the Saints make more sense. The Panthers are the favorites right now, but yeah, I'm with you, Matt. That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me with everything. Like the, Again, he went, it's, a good quarterback doesn't make your roster good, man. He went 4-12 and 12 the last time we saw him on the, on, the, on the Texans, and obviously that Texans team was a total mess, but... Panthers. So is this Panthers. So, so, yeah, as opposed to the Panthers. Panthers. Who are a shining... <laughs> which are... Which is that utopia yeah. image yeah. of the all the like, standard, white buildings. The gold standard of, of what a football team should look like. Anyway. Um, what, I figure we can hop into the rest of uh, free agency and, you know, there's a lot of... There's, there's a really a lot of guys available. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> I think, Theo, the way you wanted to do this was we'd go by division. Yeah. Or do you want to go by team? I, I, well, there's 32 teams, so I didn't want to do like... That's what I'm saying. Teams is a we lot. We have a lot. I, I, was, I have a list of all the divisions and one team from each division and one signing in each division that I think makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, I, I'd be down to do it that way. I don't know if what you guys have prepared or yeah. what you guys want to talk about. I know there's a list of just like maybe the best ones I'd be down to talk about. But right yeah, now... I, I, think, I, th- I think I might just go through some of the best ones and... Fair enough. All right. Well, let's hear the first one. Then. Let's hear the first one. Uh, probably Taron Armstead. Taron Armstead is probably the casualty of the Saints, you know, spending, which isn't the word. I mean, they didn't really yes. have him last year and before they were just absolutely rocked by injuries, like in the quarterback room and the wide receiver room, like they were on pace to the playoffs without him. So, I mean, the obvious answer is the Bengals. Like, they could really use a, a good lineman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My favorite Bengals fit is actually Brandon Scherf. Um, I think, like, the left side of the Bengals line, which is Williams and, and Spain and their center, whose name I'm... Hopkins. Yeah, it's not that bad. If It's not It's not that bad, it's like, but the right like, side is just like... Number 77. <laughs> number 77. Number, yeah, and, and Carmen, who they took in the second round, which is a bad pick when it happened, and... You know that that right side of the of the line is just atrocious. So sure, like shoring up that right guard position, which is the weakest one, to me, if you're gonna like, they have the cap space to maybe sign both, which would really be cool. But uh, Scherf to Cincinnati makes a little bit more sense to me than Teron Armstead to Cincinnati. I think like 
the Dolphins, who just don't have any guys anywhere. Like the Dolphins' offensive line, yeah, doesn't have. They like, need volume more. It's like you look, you look at Cincinnati, and you can say, okay, if you get one guy in free agency, you go make a big splash, and then you get, you use your first round pick on a guy, and that's. And that's not bad. And I think I think a lot of what it'll come down to for Cincinnati is who they like in the draft. Right. So they're like, maybe if they like some of the interior players better, they'll go tackle. If they like some of the tackles, they'll go interior and free agents. Yes. Right. So it's especially especially being later in the draft, they're probably looking more interior because I, I imagine most of the high profile tackles will be gone. right. So the Dolphins yeah. the Dolphins need a left tackle more than the Bengals do. So that's why I think like if we're talking. Free agency Bengals offensive line additions. I like Scherf more than Teron Armstead for them. And Scherf is probably even cheaper. But uh, Teron Armstead to the Dolphins is, to me, something I've seen rumored a little bit that they like him. And Scherf to Cincinnati mm-hmm. as far as like offensive line goes. Although they both, they both have terrible offensive lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I can definitely see an offensive line signing going to Cincinnati or Miami. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I guarantee you it will happen. Just, <laughs> I guarantee you both of those teams will sign an offensive line. But you have to wonder, like, I feel like New York, both New the York, Giants and the Jets have to be looking at offensive They do too. I, especially bit. New York, man. I mean, I just made a mock draft and I had them taking Stingley and Thibodeau. Which to me mm-hmm. is just a really, really yeah. tempting draft to take because I think those have the potential to be the two best overall players in the whole thing. Really, like um, if if I think it's very possible that Aquanu and Neil are already gone by that point, and it depends on how they feel about Cross. But yeah, they definitely also need offensive line. So yeah, who are the other offensive yeah, linemen there's available? Just- there's Armstead. There's Scherf. There's who else? Um, let me pull it up. Yeah, In the meantime, I think like one other that I'm liking a lot is, and a team I'm very interested to see how they approach free agency is the Raiders. With everything else happening in that division, yeah, like what do you do? Because I don't even th- give up. I don't think you can't give up because Mahomes isn't. No, <laughs> no, you can't give up. <laughs> you fold. You fold as an organization. I agree, though. It's, it's like, like no, these guys aren't dude. going anywhere. You can't just be like, oh, let's just weather the storm. The storm is going to be 15 years here, dude. Like Mahomes yeah. is young. Herbert is young. <laughs> Wilson is 33. I mean, you got that's but, probably another. But to Brady, Brady played till he was 44. Right? Wilson might so be. Like, you might have to bank on Wilson being around five, six, seven years. So. Like they can't, they can't just close up shop here, and they can't tuck their tail between their legs and just like be like, "Oh, can we please transfer division?" So I like, I think that they should really <laughs> look to add. JC Jackson is my big thing for them because it's like, okay, he's a really good corner. <laughs> he was elite this year. Yeah. He was really, really elite this year. If you're going to have all these quarterbacks in your division, you, you should probably invest in some secondary options. You know they have that relationship with him. They've they're the latest team to try Patriots. You know somewhere else with all these Patriots guys. So you have the, that relationship with JC Jackson. You've got a lot of cap space, and you're going to need an elite cornerback in this division. So JC Jackson to the Raiders is one that I think they they need to go all in too. They they need to put all their yeah. like they need to try to win. They can't just be like oh we're JC Jackson. JC Jackson's a guy I think fits for a lot of different teams. Uh, the Raiders, of course, being one of them, but um, I put out a video for the Colts, and I guess this is kind of a spoiler. I think the Colts should make a move for J.C. Jackson. I mean, you look outside of, outside of Kenny Moore, who do they have in that secondary? Uh, I mean, it, they have that rookie with the, uh, Rock uh, Rock Sin, Rock yeah, Rock uh, who is he, okay. He's he's not he he's not bad, but he played like. 600 i think he played less than 600 snaps last year yes he's not bad that that secondary just see it secondary just seems really it it's most positions on that team it's either like totally lacking in talent or totally lacking in depth yes um and in in their secondary they just have no depth and jc jackson feels like if they're gonna make a big splash that's where it would probably need to be they have the most cap space in the nfl who, they had a really good defensive coordinator signing, and I'm trying to figure out who it was going to be, who it is. Gus Bradley. Okay, so they're going to blitz, and they're going to play some man coverage with um, Gus Bradley there. They're gonna, they're gonna, it's going to be a whole different story than what they were doing <laughs> under Eberflus, who played a very interesting style of defense where it was totally safe, 
we're just going to zone coverage, yeah. we don't, no blitz. We're not going to blitz. We're just going to go in these zones and not blitz, and we're just going to limit all big plays, which I think makes sense because they don't have a lot of like high-level defensive talent outside of Darius Leonard and, and DeForest Buckner. Outside of that, it's like a lot of like, yeah, that you don't really trust them to that's, just win that's, one-on-ones that's, that's over and problem. over again. They, and just, under- they just don't have – and like even on their defense, like their defensive line is very shaky. Yeah, and – it's very and Quiddy Pay hopefully develops, and you got DeForest Buckner there, so you know it's 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 possible that it's good. But yeah, they're definitely going to need more high level talent to to run what Gus Bradley does because, like under Eberflus, it was like we're just going to play it safe and be fine with being the eleventh best defense in football. Right? We're just we're just going to be good. <laughs> we're going to yeah. be good. We're going to be solid. And with Gus Bradley, it's a little bit different, and you need guys like J.C. Jackson who can just like win their one-on-ones and the Patriots love cover one and they love man coverage. So I, I think that makes sense. So I actually like the, Col- I think, it, I think it's a really good fit, but I don't know. But the the, the problem is the Colts aren't big spenders. Yeah. They never, <laughs> they never, they never make moves like that. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know if they'll actually do it, but I think it would be, a nice I like thing. the idea though. I do like the idea. They got a lot of cap space. One, one guy, one guy who I think is probably going to leave their team um Hassan Reddick Mm -hmm. I think he's an interesting one um because I feel like he's a good edge rusher but he's very much not a fit everywhere right if you're a 4-3 like you he needs to be a 3-4 like outside linebacker who you do not need to rely on him in, in run defense and you have packages that like sprinkle him in around different places right right I mean we saw because with the Cardinals he struggled for a while he was he was like a big bust for a while yeah. and then he he sort of ended up figuring it out and i'll give the panthers credit they did do a good job of, of putting him in a position to win um but I, I think he's pretty easily the best edge edge rusher available probably um, probably i know that might be a little bit blasphemous against <laughs> von miller and chandler jones but true he, I, I mean i von think miller, i think where those guys von are at in their career right now and where he is i'd it's not. You probably rather have the the vets, but yeah, Reddick Reddick shouldn't Miller, get a big deal. I just don't know where. Von Miller's teased the idea of going back to Denver. Ah, that's what he's, he's he's. It's either Denver or the Rams. Yeah. Why? And, why go? So that, those are both contenders who would probably bring you back yeah. at like the, the, where you're beloved. Like, yeah, you won a Super Bowl ring both places. They're both contenders. You would love to live in either place if you're Von Miller. I think he's he's gone to one of those two places. Yeah. Trying to think of like heavy, like three, four teams. I think the Giants are one, um, but I just don't think they have a huge need for Reddick. I don't know. I'd have to have a list in front of me. One thing I, I another one I like is Juju Smith Schuster to the Jaguars. That's one where it's like Ooh. they're missing out on a lot of the like Amari Cooper's. The, yeah. yeah. But but they don't they don't need that like, oh, they're going to go sign this one guy and that's going to fix. That's not the case. They need guys who are dependable, I think, a little bit more trustworthy, and you need a volume of them. You need several guys. Yeah. and So I think Smith-Schuster, yeah, you could get him on a good contract. That's I agree. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense to me because Juju is not this – because when A.B. left, the spotlight was on him to be like this big star because he had a really good season as the number two alongside Antonio mm-hmm. Brown, like really good. And you expected him mm-hmm. to cement himself as – maybe the best wide receiver in football at that, like with what he did at his age. I mean, he was like, he's so young. He was like 20 years old putting up these crazy numbers. So he was legitimately at the time expected to be like an offensive player of the year candidate. And he just wasn't that. And he's one of the, like, he became like hated and he was doing his dances despite kind of like underwhelming and everyone didn't like him, but he's a really useful like slot wide receiver. He's a big slot guy, tough good catch radius, strong hands. And when I think of all the RPOs and like the quick, like slants that, Mm -hmm. that Doug Peterson offenses have and the amount of like easy catches that the Jaguars were just incapable of catching last year, I really like Juju to the Jaguars. And it's not like going to be this totally like, Oh my God, he can do everything, win everywhere all the time, like level guy. But I think that would be a really solid fit. And I don't know if he'd want to play in Jacksonville. And honestly, I wouldn't blame anybody for being like, oh, (laughs) I could go play with the Chiefs for a little bit less money. 
sure that'll up my value yeah, guaranteed right. and by yeah. the time i hit free agency there's, there's, but, there are a lot of places where if i'm juju i'm like yeah i'm going there instead of but I, I really well, like here's that the thing, thing. I, I think i think it's maybe hard to get i don't think it makes sense for juju unless they offer him something really good because he's he, what's he gonna take he's gonna take like probably a one year probably a one year prove it deal i think there's a decent chance unless someone really wants to pay him and jacksonville can do that but okay so a one year prove it deal trevor lawrence or patrick mahomes yeah, uh, yeah. Chiefs, <laughs> right? Chiefs like, who are probably going to play in the Super well, Bowl well, again. The other, the other side the of again, or the, the, o- the other side of that would be like, okay, if it's a one year prove it deal, and you're trying to get a bigger deal, mm-hmm. you are how much volume are you getting? What uh, with Mahomes? In what situation did he have his his best numbers? Alongside when he yeah. was a number two, yeah, number two, right? I guess that's I, that's what I think. Yeah, so I I think and I think it would be a really good deal for the Chiefs. Yeah, it's, it's it would just be so hard. It's like go play with the best quarterback in the league. I'm not the number one. I'm really like the third receiving option. I can hit some of the you know. I feel like he can do maybe some of the you know the slot. He'd be a really good fit on the Chiefs Tyreek too. Hill. He'd be a really good fit on yeah, that. It's like the fit is there. The team is great. Dude, yeah, yeah, I think that I think that's just so, and the, and the Chiefs would be dumb not to offer him a little something. So yeah, I, I think the Chiefs make a lot of sense too, but I really do like him to the Jaguars as well. <laughs> like they need someone like Juju, so, and I just don't know where they do it because like number one overall, they're probably not, they're definitely not going to. I'll say that they'll definitely not take a wide receiver first overall. Uh, you can find Juju Smith Schuster's in the early second round though, so that's probably what'll end up happening, like a Sky Moore. Or, or a David Bell a little bit later. I know he had a bad combine. So maybe that does make more sense because the Chiefs don't probably want to draft a wide receiver. They'd rather have someone more proven, whereas the Jaguars would probably be more willing what to. What if they did? But if they did, I think Juju makes a lot of sense to there. And the, but what if? What if? One more. Um, I think Casey Hayward well, to the Panthers uh, is what I wrote down for the NFC South, man. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. But like as we Watson. discussed, I wasn't really thinking of Watson. Well, I, I, I was gonna say down. like if we were talking about the Chiefs, I mean Tyron Matthews is gonna be a free agent. Yes. Is yeah. I think I think he so goes back to the Chiefs probably, wouldn't you? Yeah, I like I mean, Baltimore. I like think, Baltimore a lot. For are a they gonna have? Are they gonna have the money? That's I was. Yeah. I yeah, they can. They can. I mean, how much can they open up restructuring? A lot. They can open up a decent amount, like even million. though cap. It, and, even yeah. though Mahomes' cap the, it's, is going it's up. not. But my my big concern with them is like their offensive line is really cheap right now. But if they were to if they were to pay Tyron Matthew, I worry that they might not be able to pay their offensive line. I think. Way. I think. The goal when you have a, a, a team this good and a player like that, you know how we, we talk about how you need to be all in to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. So it's and we, we talked about the okay, Packers drafting no. Jordan Love one foot out the door, one foot in. It's the same thing here. If you're planning to be good two years from now when all those guys get expensive and make yourself worse now, that's sort of the same thing where it's one restructure absolutely everybody you can, bring back absolutely everyone you can. Backload as much as possible. Go, I mean, like, be there. It, Mahomes is only yeah. going to get more expensive. Being anything short of as aggressive as you can possibly be, especially since, you know, Tyreek Hill and, you know, Travis Kelsey's getting up there and it's like, you're going to have to pay Tyreek Hill next season. It's like, yeah. You still can bring everyone back. And I think, yeah. I think the Chiefs can get better. They're going to cut Frank Clark. They're going to cut Frank Clark. Like, that guy, that yeah. guy can be gone. Anthony Hitch and that's and how, how much is gone. that? You don't re-sign Daniel Sorensen. Yeah. He's off the team finally. So I think they're going to have enough cap space to re-sign <laughs> Tyron Matthew. And I, I, I think that he ends up back in Kansas City. If he doesn't, I like the Ravens, though. I think that's a good fit. Yeah. One interesting uh, one interesting one that I've seen is Trubisky to the Giants and having the Trubisky-Daniel Jones quarterback battle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who would you rather have, Daniel Jones or Mitch Trubisky played in? I'd probably have Daniel Jones. I'd probably. I I, I, tr- I trust the athleticism. This is a, a little trick bit question. No, oh, Marcus Mariota. I'm afraid. I think. Oh, Marcus Mariota has had a good season before. Fair. And also, he is the most mobile. It's interesting. So I I think, that. I think that Daniel Jones is pretty mobile. Daniel Jones is pretty mobile. I think that I'd rather He's, have Daniel Jones and Mitchell Trubisky, but it intrigues me. That Dable likes Trubisky this much to like think he's a good start because 
Trubisky hype is all of a sudden gone into like overdrive where people are like, oh, he's a super coveted. Yeah, I've seen that everywhere. Br- Browns fans have been, Browns fans have been talking about Trubisky. Yeah, so Trubisky all of a sudden like, is just like <laughs> so. Uh, he must look like really good. <laughs> this this <laughs> happens all the time. Anyone, anytime there's a guy who's a backup, and all of a sudden people start to think like, is he a backup or is he? a top 32 quarter. He might just be a top 32 quarterback. Hey, well, someone should give that guy a shot. Hey, he's actually really good. Hey, he's going to be our solution at court. It's like, <laughs> I think he deserves, I, I think he could play all right, but I think that that's, gonna I, I think he's, I think he deserves a quarterback battle. He deserves a competition. I think that same thing with Mariota, same thing with Jones. I think it makes sense. Trubisky to the giants because Daniel Jones should have some competition. Like there's an, yeah. There is a real it's shot just, that Mitchell Trubisky is better than many. Like, like it's not like Daniel Jones is this world beater, <laughs> right? So to bring in like people always say yeah. that you have two quarterbacks, you have none. But if you have just Daniel Jones, I don't think that's all that much better. <laughs> Plus, I think that would just be something to talk about as as time goes on. Obviously, it's tough for me to say, you know, who's better right now because we haven't seen this. I, I guess this new look Trubisky that has been developed in um in buffalo but i like the fit of daniel jones and dable's offense but i think mitchell trubisky to the giants because i don't like trubisky as like it's like an actual starter like on on no competition i don't like daniel jones as this like no competition what we're doing but i also don't (laughs) like the giants drafting a quarterback at five or seven so let's Mm -hmm. make them compete let's have the mid off and let's see (laughs) <laughs> let's have the mid off and let's see who is more mid and who is more bad. <laughs> I like that. I think that's I a see, funny story. I don't, I don't know because now that I think about it, like Jones probably, they're probably, I guess maybe they're comparable. It's hard to say, but Jones is pretty they mobile are. himself. He, like he, he might well, be the well, most mobile well, of the three. Matt, Matt, let me, let me know right now. Who are you taking on your fantasy team? <laughs> Am I taking on my fantasy team? <laughs> yeah. Um, Dynasty we'll say, we'll would tell you ball. go Jones because draft capital invested, but with a new coach, it kind of doesn't matter. I would say at this point, whoever you think is best, but right now, who has the best path to a starting job at this very second? Probably Jones. Jones. Yeah, probably go him. Yeah, and you know the reason I ask is because right now you can draft a 2022 best ball fantasy football team in underdog that fantasy big board tournament. With two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash prizes and fifty thousand dollars to first place, you know which star players will you draft to make a splash in your twenty twenty two fantasy team? Could it be Daniel Jones? Could it be Mitch Trubisky? Could it be Marcus Mariota? You can draft your ideal fantasy roster in the big board now, and that's it. There's no waivers or trades or having to set your lineup. Underdog will give you the optimal score each week. And get this, right now, when you sign up with the code Stay Hot, Underdog will match your initial deposit with up to $100 in bonus cash. So what are you waiting for? Go check out underdogfantasy.com or their mobile app. Sign up with the code Stay Hot, and may the best drafter win. Um, we only have a little bit of time left. So we can either try and hit more free agency stuff, but I think we've done a pretty good job of. Kind I think of we've talked about all that. the free. Agents we've talked about all of them, the all the teams. There, are, there. <laughs> that is all the free agents for every possible team. Uh, <laughs> but M- NBA season has been, you know, heating up a little bit. Obviously, yeah. LeBron has been cooking recently. Uh, the Kings lost a couple days ago, but Darren Fox had a great game, so I was happy. That scammer um, that you stan? <laughs> you scam the, st- stan the scammer? Listen, man, we don't we don't talk about that. <laughs> LeBron good. Uh, LeBron good. Uh, Lakers bad. I, I'll say, I think, <laughs> when, when it comes to the GOAT debate, a lot uh, one, one thing that a lot of people bring up are the accolades, and I'm not saying like you're wrong for that, um, but the scoring titles have always bothered me. Ten to one. Oh, Jordan. Well, it's because it has more to do with their play styles, right? Of course, LeBron doesn't shoot enough to go win ten scoring titles, and he's a good player because he also passes. But to win a scoring title, oftentimes it's more about like not just about being a great scorer. But we saw last year like Bradley Beal almost won it, or Curry almost won it last year. But then he's not this year because his team is better and he doesn't need to shoot it as much. Bradley Beal got to take all the shots last year. You know he gets. 
he uh, has has a real good shot at it. George, I mean, when LeBron, you know, is such a good passer, he's just not going to win. Like his play style does not fit that of someone who's going to go get a bunch of scoring titles. And I'm glad that this year, because he leads right now, I think just barely, he is getting to kind of like prove himself as like, if he wants to go score, he's going to go score. He can do this type of thing, man. And now that the Lakers are bad and need him to do everything, what is he doing? He's going to go and Everything. have a real good shot at winning the scoring <laughs> title. Um, Which is just hilarious I, I, if he does. because how, how old is LeBron? 37? 37 years old, year 19. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 37 years old. <laughs> and when he, first got to, when he first got to LA, he won the assist title when they had you know these, these guys who could. Yep. He, they needed him to be exactly, the point guard. Dude. They needed him to be the point guard. They needed him to facilitate, which he hadn't really had to do in his career. I mean, he was more of a wing, a forward. And then he came in as more of this guard type and transformed his game. It's like, oh, I'm leading the league in assists now. And, you know, he, oh, I've got to lead the league in scoring now and I have to drop, drop two 50-point games. And, and, and the fact that he could have done this the whole time, you know, at, at any point in his career, he could be any type of player that he needed to be at, at a, the highest level in the NBA through mm-hmm. 19 years. And it, it is really insane. Yep. It's really, really crazy that he, if he needed to go out and lead the league in rebounds, he could probably... It. I mean, he's been playing center even these these last like couple of games. He's been yeah, playing the five and doing this. Yeah, he's yeah. been playing big men and and hitting deep three and he's <laughs> and he's offended right because he's like, the, oh, no one ever brings the the lay fuck you. Three. Yeah, right. And, he gets <laughs> he just can't do this forever. This is why I think he's gone. The Lakers are just I just don't see him being aggressive enough because they weren't aggressive at the trade deadline at all. Um, and he's there's no way he's signing up for this again. He's emptying the tank right now to get them in the plans. It's like that's just not – AD yeah. is just not going to stay healthy, I don't think. It's just not in the cards for him. With these big guys, they just they just can't help getting injured. Same thing with like Porzingis. He just can't stay healthy. It's not their fault, but I, I think I don't think you can trust AD to stay healthy at all. Um, and it's just uh, – with, with LeBron, it is crazy. W- what's killed him – as far as winning these title awards, like assist title and scoring titles, that he does both. And to win one, you really need to only do one right. a lot. Not saying that Jordan couldn't pass because he could, but like John Stockton has more combined assist and scoring titles than LeBron because he wasn't a great scorer. So he passed all the time. He was a great passer, passed all the time, racked them up. So it, it's cool to see like LeBron just be like, if I need to do this, I can. And then he does. Yeah, you don't um, see a lot of black. The black when you look at his account on like Basketball Reference, you don't see a lot of that dark, bold black. Like led the league in this. It's he had a scoring title in in 2007. He had a he has a scoring title right now as of as of right now, and he had the assist title two years ago. So, like, yeah, he could always do it, but he's he's too well rounded to win scoring titles or titles in general. Yeah, you're right, Matt. But sometimes there's just no one to pass it to, and right now. <laughs> Right now, there's no one to pass it to. You pass it. You pass it to yourself. Right. You pass this it to yourself. The LeBron yeah, show. He has the third <laughs> lowest assist rate of his career right now, or assists per game of his fourth lowest assists per game of his career right now, uh, yeah. by far his lowest yep. number. And he has six. Yeah. He has six. Yeah. It's no, like, it's, it's it's not. not he's not bad. passing the ball, but <laughs> it's it's tough. Um, but I, I don't know what they're going to do in the playoffs. I don't know how they're going to do in the plans. I think it'd be really interesting to see that Lakers team play the Pelicans with Zion healthy. That'd be that'd be what I would be looking forward to. Um, and I think the the Pelicans would kind of clean up. <laughs> I think about we're it. we're getting down. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I want to talk about: Nets looking real good. Yep. Getting a little nervous about Simmons. Yep. Uh, Steve Nash today said he's not ready for one on ones yet which is a step away from being a step away of like actually playing in the game. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I, I'm not saying like there's any, I'm not saying he's like a, a faking it or like a bad guy. Like that's, that's not my point, but dude, we're a month away from the playoffs. <laughs> and so like, if he doesn't come back soon, even if he's ready for the playoffs, he's just going to play his first game with this. They're, this team's going to go in and have Ben Simmons who, it's good, but like maybe a little bit of like a, a fit problem that you want to figure out, and they're just going to go just game one, just be like, "Yep, all right, we're, he's, we just added Ben Simmons for the playoffs." Um, I'd be interested to see how that plays right. out, and I feel like 
they can work them in and ease them in and, and whatnot. And there's obviously scrimmages and whatever, but it, w- it would the, really suck if you got to the playoffs and you're like, all right, Ben Simmons, time time to roll, and he just is a disaster. Well, and the, the other thing is like, if the Nets are going to win, they need they got to stay healthy. They got to stay healthy, and it's like. You traded Harden and you got back a guy who is not currently healthy, not healthy right now. And it's like, oh, but they should be ready. But then all of a sudden the timeline gets pushed back. And it's like, what if they come back and they're not themselves or they get re-injured? And then Kyrie, I mean, Kyrie not being able to play a lot of games this year. Good thing, probably for the Nets, honestly, being a low seed and having a healthy Kyrie who's fresh, only played 20 games going into the playoffs. Probably more important because he's another guy who just for the like cannot stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, um, didn't, Kyrie, every, didn't Kyrie everything. drop fifty like a week ago or something? Yeah, I mean, Kevin Durant has forty four. Remember, yeah. Kevin Durant is currently playing the Knicks. <laughs> They're up by seven, and he has forty four points, forty six points. He's just scored. So yeah, there. <laughs> Kyrie dropped fifty against the Hornets. <laughs> yeah. Not shocking. No. This, this is nothing new. But yeah, no, the Nets are looking good. But yeah, in, in terms of you expect this score to win a title you expect him to win multiple yeah. titles honestly this is probably what the expectation should have done when it first happened and yeah it's just tough to trade away james harden for i mean yeah seth curry like yeah andre drummond but i mean and curry's been big for them yeah. curry huge it sucks they lost joe harris yeah so dude if they they because some of the lineups they could have put out i guess i guess you can't really but having a uh, seth curry and a joe harris type shooters i mean these are some of these are some of the absolute top guys you would yeah, pick you to play you that always role. you would always at all times have one of the best three-point shooters in the league out there for you with both of those guys like you could make that happen although joe harris did suck in the playoffs last time but well and that, that, that might be a that might be a huge difference for them it's like healthy kd healthy Kyrie. And then your best shooter is just hitting their shots. Dude, that is a world above where they were last year, which was barely losing to the champions. Yes. So yeah. they could still win the whole thing. But yeah, no, you would definitely like Simmons. I, I, too. I'm, I, if, if, even if Simmons doesn't play, I really like them if they stay healthy. But I just am so scared to pick a team that is so injury prone. Yeah. I think it's a good take. One more. I have one more free agency take. Allen Robinson. For NFL? Yeah, I have one more. Oh. Allen Robinson to the Commanders. All right, Wentz, just get him a big dude. That's a, that's all I got to say about Wentz. And he'll just throw it yeah, up just to him? just throw it up to him. Pitt, him and McLaurin? Pitt, that'd be fine. McLaurin's yeah. not a big dude. He's he's more precise. McLaurin, well, but, you don't want to... But McLaurin can play big. He can, he go can play big. Yeah, he goes he, up and gets he goes, the ball. He goes up and gets stuff. But, like, Wentz, Pittman is a Wentz wide receiver. Ertz and Goddard, those are Wentz wide receivers. Like, Wentz and precision is not good. Like, you do not want a precise dude. Like, yes, you want... McLaurin, obviously, but also just in case, like, let's go get Allen Robinson. Like, let's just go get that big guy who can go up. Like maybe he's slow at this point in his career. Maybe he's not the greatest route runner at this point in his career, like creating separation, but you can win, you can win the 50, 50 ball. So let's just get that for once. Okay. Allen Robinson to the commanders. That's, that's my take. Anyway, that's my, I don't really have all that much else to say about the NBA at this point. Yeah, we're 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 getting close to time. Our producers yelling at us to wrap up at this point. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for us today. As always, tons and tons of content coming away on all platforms. We'll be back Friday um, to go over the NCAA tournament. Caruso's we'll back. Wait, welcome back, Alex Caruso. That's my last. <laughs> yes. yes, good good game from him. Welcome in his back, future. welcome back, Alex Caruso. <laughs> Actually, I, did you guys see the the clip of uh, yes? What is <laughs> what's up with your dude, man? <laughs> I have not seen. I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> Who was it that was rubbing? Was it Darius Garland? I think it was Garland, unless I'm super mistaken. He was like rubbing rubbing his face on just, <laughs> Alex just being Caruso's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> But Yeah, that, yeah. I, I had no idea what was going on there, but yeah, we'll be back Friday to give our NCAA tournament bracket predictions. Um, you know, March Madness right around the corner. So we're going to make sure to hit on that. Don't miss out on all the great content coming to win all platforms. As always, from Corn Boy, Bird Boy, and Lemon Boy, we will catch you all on the flippity flop. <laughs>